and just wanting to work together and I mean get out that aggression right I know it's just been like such an odd year and it's really great that important track festival could pull together for this go around right before the trials now the guys are getting their instructions right now you see some here we go all right they're underway here all right you see some University of Portland athletes there. The sun is setting here. I mean, it sets pretty late at this time of year out in Portland. It's 8.50, and it's still light outside. Now we got the medal playing for after hours. <laughs> you know, uh, also in this race uh, is one of the all-time uh, greats for Division Three. Uh, he was out of, uh, let me see his name here. Guys rolling at the front. I don't see Seguru Osako out there unless he's in the back of the pack at the moment. I thought I caught a... There he is. He's sitting at the back. Yeah, he might try to, like, slowly wind into this. So... So that, that explains why he didn't jump on the interview after his, his big win and his meet record. <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's winding it up at the back of the pack now. Getting in some extra work. Looking towards that marathon in Tokyo. Looks like these guys are just starting out right around 440 pace. So they're out just a hair over 70 seconds. Um, 71 seconds through the first lap there. And we know, well, it's 28, 28 pace is, is 67 seconds. These guys, a lot of them are, are gunning for that 29-minute mark. Out, re out, uh, out in the beginning to uh, start this race is Mark from uh, Hoka One One Aggies. Uh, he was a Division II 10K All-American while running at um, Cal Poly Panoma, Panoma. The Mustangs. Yeah, that's right. Slow. Well, I, I think that's in... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's where he's training currently. It's in slow. Okay. With the, uh, San the Luis Aggies Obispo. Club. Yeah. Yeah. So, for those of you keeping track at home, too, we told you that we were going to keep track of team wins. So far tonight, starting out with distance events, uh, steeplechase in 10,000 meters. We had the very nice track club taking a win with Mason Fairlix winning the steeplechase. And we also have the Bowerman Track Club taking a win with Courtney Frerich's win in the steeplechase and Pete's Dragons taking a win. So All across the board. You know, it's the first night. It's early, so we'll see how things spread out. There's a lot of events tomorrow where there's going to be some great competitions within these rivalries. Brooks Beast, they need to get on the board. Who else do we have? The On team? Um, the OTC? Yeah, the, yeah, OTC, the uh, On Athletic Club out of Boulder. So there's there's a lot of great groups here in Portland this weekend. Really excited to watch them. The Boss team from Boulder, they're here too. Yeah. The events tomorrow are ridiculous, Derek. That's, that's been the really fun thing about the last few years with uh, the running scene is you've seen these groups starting to form and elevate each other, and, and you see it on the track too. Times are just getting faster, and, and U.S., is at an all-time high in terms of distance running. We're seeing some really good performances out there. Uh, it's fun to see these team rivalries shape up too. Like each each group has a different uh, different identity, a different approach, a different style, um, and that's that oftentimes is dictated by their coach. But then the the athletes as well. You got a lot of big personalities out there, yeah. uh, and a lot of different personalities on the teams, like the dragons. Uh, or Pete's right. River City Gamblers, as I like to call them too. Uh, you got you got Wild Craig Angles on there, and you also got like the smooth, uh, rumbling Donovan Brazier on there too. And then you got Jessica Hole, who's one of the nicest people ever, and and Raven Rogers in there too. She's a great individual and just a, a food lover in in Portland too. She loves uh she loves Luck Lock, yeah, which is a great Vietnamese place in town. Awesome. So a lot of a lot of great people on on each of these teams. Yeah. Uh, Pete's group loves to get out there and race. Uh, they like to mix it up in any any situation. Um, well, he, here we come up on a mile for this race. So they've been consistently clicking around 70 seconds, and we're going through at 439, 438. So 
you know, they're, they're plugging away here. They're running pretty consistently. Right around that 440 pace. We know that Bowerman Track Club definitely has their, uh, their identity, too. They're, they're probably the Yankees, I would say, of the, the running world right now in terms of teams. If they could put... It, their, their stable is a... It's an embarrassment of riches. They could put upwards of a dozen athletes on the U.S. Olympic team come right. the trials. Imagine going to practice and kind of looking around and be like, oh, wait, there's four of us competing in the same event and there's three spots. Like, what an what a opportunity. You're like, okay, here we go. Every day it's, you're getting a little taste of that, that competitiveness. But, um, yeah, it's sure fun to watch those groups compete. Yeah, and then you got the Brooks Beefs from up north, too. you got Josh Kerr, who's a, who's a feared man in terms of 1,500-meter running in, in North America. Even though he represents Great Britain, he kind of... He really uh, dictates those races here on the continent, along with Ollie Hoare now, especially this year. He's been a talent. Hasn't he been fun to watch since graduating from Wisconsin? He's really come onto the scene and just stuck his nose in races, and it'll be interesting to see what he can do, uh, especially as we get up to the Olympics and, and Tokyo and, and everything that's coming with that. So um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. So we've got these guys, uh, 69.99, so... Just a, a smidge under 70 seconds for that, for that lap. So this is uh, Jonathan Phillips up here who's, who's been leading the last few, few laps. And he, he walked on at Cornell on their track team. And uh, recently he won the 2019, 2019 Hartford Half Marathon in 64.51. And he competed at the 2020 Olympic Trials in Atlanta. Um, so he's, he's definitely doing some range here today. Not quite the marathon distance, but in that other race, too, we saw a lot of marathoners kind of dipping lower uh, into the 10K and kind of picking up the wheels a little bit. So, uh, And I, I like to see that, like, I mean, you can get the splits on the track. Um, it's, it's hard to tell what closing splits are for the marathon, especially when you get down under a mile. So I never know what that final stretch, what kind of quarter they're running. But it's cool to see the leg speed of some of these marathon runners, like Suguru closing in 61. Like you said, that's that's really exciting. <laughs> that's world class speed, I mean, and you know I'm sure he's just so excited for what's to happen later this summer, especially representing his home country. Like, what a, what an opportunity for him. Yeah, bring it at home, and uh, I mean Yu Yu Yoshida too. That was that was pretty awesome to see him mix it up and get in there. Yeah, he's really come into his own this year, and I think he's going to turn a lot of heads. And uh, it's kind of like he's just like, okay, here I am. Welcome to the party. I'm ready to jump on the track and on marathon. So it'll be interesting to see how he holds up uh, next in the years to come. Guys, we're getting some great drone footage here, too, and we actually had a little bit of a scare. Uh, <laughs> the window is open, and I think there might be a like some type of a plate in, in Derek Derek's head because the drone just went straight for it and uh, it almost uh, it almost took out this room here but we're all good just to let you know I thought, is I thought for sure that it was broken I thought I was just going to hit the window and then hit the track <laughs> go straight down but thankfully it didn't alright we're coming through just over two miles now they went through about 808 so still kind of pretty even around that 70 second pace um, So two miles coming up next yeah, time. Yeah, and then the next lap. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's your magnetic personality. I, I know. That's what that's what the drone was attracted to, I think. Who do we got up front here? Oscar. Is that Oscar Oscar Medina? No, that's Sal Acosta up front. Of the Zatopec Zacatecas. And Jonathan Phillips right behind him. And Seguru there sitting at the back. He's getting a nice little 440. <laughs> this is just another training run for him. He's uh, He looks pretty comfortable. He's hanging in there through two miles almost. It looks like Sal Acosta wants some help at the front there. Jonathan Phillips goes right back up. And the rate back to the races tomorrow. Um, you won't want to miss it. Starting out at 6 p.m., that's when we're going to open it up. But 6.15 p.m., the men's 800 kicks off, and you got to be a 145 man to get into that field. Which is just, <laughs> it's so fast. Yeah. Like that, it's just. 
Donovan Brazier, the world champion, he's run the American record holder, 142.34, and he's not the fastest man in the field. Emmanuel Career, 142.05. And then you got the, the Olympic 1500 meter champion in there, yeah. Matt Sensowitz, who's coming into his own right now, scaring yeah. everybody. Career has got some range. He had some really good wheels and a 400 uh, down at Hayward earlier this year and just looked really smooth. So. You know, he's a, he's a UTEP guy who, like, ran really well um, for the minors down in El Paso, and uh, he's going to be one to watch tomorrow. I'm excited to, to see what he can do. From the minors to the majors. That's right. He's got, yeah, get, getting into the big show here in the Electric Forest. Yeah, and now the Electric Forest, who knows what's going to happen. All right. That's Mark Huizar, the Hoka Aggies, Central California. Another, right. let's see what this lap is. They're hitting right around 71, 70 to 72 second lap. So another 71. Okay, so the pace has slowed a little bit, but what does that put us in terms of 10K pace charts? Uh, let's see here. And how about that women's 800 tomorrow too? You got Raven Rogers in it against Kate Grace. And, Kate's uh, been looking really strong this year. She ran two flat earlier this year and uh, has really just adapted to a new training system. She joined the boss team um, after a really good career with Bowerman Track Club, but I know that she's looking to make her, her Olympic team again. Um, so uh, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, a couple OTC athletes in there, Chanel Price, Sabrina Sutherland. Chanel Price was undefeated last year in the 800 in the Big Friendly series, but she, only, she took one loss to Nia Aikens in that 600 at the Bigger Friendly. Nia, in her debut, took her down in 127. Yeah. Jeff, so, what's it been like? I mean, like, now we're, we're hosting these, like, bigger, this is a somewhat bigger meet than the Big Friendlies. How excited were you today uh, to get to the, to the stadium and, and to get these races going? I, I mean, I was, I was on top of the world just getting back here. Like, being back at the track in Lewis and Clark, in Griswold Stadium, with the trees around us, getting into this old shaky press box. There's, you can't beat it. I mean, the track, the facility is absolutely beautiful too. Uh, they were, they were cleaning the track off yesterday, and now, it's, it's kind, it's a super cool feeling in this facility too, because it's set onto a hillside, but then, like you got this, this perfectly flat, beautiful red ring, like in the trees too. That's that's cut into the hillside and there couldn't be a better setting for uh, a track it's beautiful and then if you look above the 1500 meter start line you can start to see mount hood just piercing above the skyline and it's uh, it's a beautiful night for racing especially for these 10k athletes it's perfect conditions light winds uh, you know yeah you think oh. they're enjoying the views right now <laughs> i think uh you know all these left turns uh are probably getting to a few of them but <laughs> it's gonna be fun here there's a good pack there's there's a really good pack so this race is anybody's right now um we'll see that as we come up to the halfway mark here in about two two minutes and change so um, do you think this could be Seguru's race here like do you think he's gonna stay in it until the end you can't count the guy out i mean he's uh he the way he ran that last lap and, and the way he progressed in that last uh, two miles and, and running 419, uh, it will be interesting to see how he holds up. Like, he's, he's in the yeah. mix here. You, you can't count the guy out. Uh, this is Acer Iverson, too, jumping into second place here. So he made a, a move from about fifth to second, and he's right on Mark Huizar now. Let's see what this lab comes through in. They're still clicking, clicking away. Let's see. Yep. Iverson meaning business here. And we're approaching. Another, another 70 second lap on that one. We're approaching 5K too. So we'll see what that is when we hit it on the back stretch. Mm -hmm. Got Gregory Leak from the Coma City Track Club in fourth place. Iverson up to the front now. 
rolling towards the uh, the 5K mark. So 1438, 1437, 1438. Yeah, Acer Iverson's a, a sophomore at Harvard, and this is his. Uh, from what we know, this is his debut in the in the 10K. A Harvard man. Harvard man. There's been a lot of uh, Ivy League uh, athletes or Ivy League alum athletes in this race. Um, yeah. Well, tomorrow you're going to see Kieran Tuntevate too, the uh, the member of the the Bar Bowerman Track, Track Club. Club. Yeah. And yeah. you won't see him in the first race of the 5K, but you'll see him in Heat Two with Woody Kincaid and Grant Fisher. So Heat Two has their hands full with a couple of low 13 minute guys, and, and Woody Kincaid even a 12:58 man in there. You think it's going to be fun to just like see them just kind of trade off, like just teammates in practice that are like, okay, yeah, I'll take the lead, you take the lead, we'll, we'll have some fun here and see who can hang with us, or what I mean, do you think I, their strategy is? You know, Jerry is always one to kind of mix it up with his athletes. Yeah, I have no idea how that's going to happen, how that's going to play out. Like, I don't know what they're going to do out there. We'll, well, we'll see. I think I bet they're going to close pretty hard. One of my favorite races is back from the U.S. Uh, indoor championships when it was in Portland in 2016, and the Bowerman Track Club just rolled a train on some of the other athletes. Do you remember that race? Yes. That's, that's Rep was the, in there. That's the beginning of the Red Lightning Express. That's right. Yep. That's, those were the, the early stages when they were first starting to hone their skills and, and start the pace train. And now it's rolling. So we're starting to see a little break in the action here. Uh, we've got some of the uh, the contenders and the pretenders here. So Seguru is leading that chase back, but he looks like he's starting to close the gap here. But they're a little bit over halfway. So let's see how uh, things shake up, especially as Seguru leading that chase pack. So Seguru ran, he just ran 27.56 for a 10K. Um, I mean, he ran a, a 10K at the end of of 2020 that was that was mid 27 minutes uh, around 27 30 somewhere in that range i think uh i don't have the numbers right in front of me yeah. but and now he just ran 27 56 and he just ran 14 30 or 14 40 for a 5k and he's, he's still going he's just balling out like <laughs> he is just having an absolute ball and let's not keep let's keep in mind at in the next you know and within the hour he is going to run 50 laps like think about that. If he if, if he, he can if there. he hangs in there and finishes this like that is mind boggling. Fifty laps in an hour. <laughs> that's that's a, a that is a power hour. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah. He got a little break in there. I mean I don't know. Maybe this is is this the best way to run fifty laps in an hour? I I don't think so. But it's uh, it's definitely a good workout. I bet you he'll go the opposite way and it's cool down. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he's gonna go more after this? Does he does it? Pete have him doing an extra workout after yeah. this. Hey, Acer, Acer Iverson looking really good here, looking pretty strong and pretty comfortable in his 10K debut. Uh, the chase pack is, is starting to thin out a little bit, and it's really fun to see uh, some of these guys just hanging in there because this, this is a long way for most of these athletes, especially in their debut, but Acer looks like he's a veteran here. Yeah, you got a lot of young guns in here, a lot of college guys that are making their step up to the 10K. And uh, if you're if you're a freshman or a sophomore in college, the 10K is a big step up from a 3,000 or 3,200 in high school. Eight laps seems like a long way for a high school kid. I mean, maybe oh times gosh. changed, but for me back in the Even day, jumping up uh, from 5K to 8K when you're going from a, a high school senior to to uh, a freshman in college, that that th extra 3K can really th throw it for. Uh, and then at the championship level, you have to do another 10K for cross. So. Yeah, Acer Iverson here, 1342 uh, down at the Sound Running track meet. So he's had a... He's had a good spring. Yeah, he's had a good spring. I think, yeah, I actually saw Acer af at the in and out afterwards down in at the track meet. And uh, did he get the fries with the cheese on top? He got the animal style, oh, yeah. Oh, my I goodness. Mean, he, he was well, he's his, running like an animal today. Like, <laughs> yes, he's this is animal style 10K. We don't have any animal style here up in up in uh, Portland, but there yeah. are some some great restaurants that you can choose from. You and can ask Raven Rogers where you should go. She she's the expert. Yeah. Here here's the Gru now moving up into second place and really taking over on that chase pack. So we'll see if he starts to reel in Acer, um, but he's he just looks strong. Like you look at his arm carriage and the way that his legs are flowing. Like he's got a lot of bounce in his step, and I'm sure in his mind he's like, okay, I'm just gonna keep chomping at the bit, and I'm gonna get ready for Tokyo. And uh, this is this is quite the performance. This is amazing. 
All right, so who's in third here? Because he's also looking pretty good, too. Um, that's... Leak? Gregory Leak? Is that right? It could be. We got Iverson out front doing all the work on his own. Gregory Leak in third place. Or, sorry, that's, uh... No. Oh, uh, Osmar Pacheco. Yeah, he's, he's out of Mexico, and uh, earlier this year, he uh, has a season best of 1451, but his lifetime PR is from 2018, where he ran 29.22. Acer Iverson, out there alone. What a right name. Now. It's a great name. Yeah. All right, so 20, 20, 20 minutes and change. Still uh, open it up. Still got a good lead on Seguru. It's fun here. Acer Iverson taking it out here. Solo. Oh, Seguru's bridging the gap now. He's leaving the guys behind, and he's going after Acer Iverson. He. This could be. This could be another famous Ritzenhain performance in the forest. But that was. Those were two 5Ks. This is two 10Ks. So combined. That's yeah. That is moving. Like if he runs, let's say he runs 30 minutes. That's. I mean, they're, they're on much faster than that pace right now. They're closer to 29 minutes here for this. Another 70-second lap for Acer Iverson. And then Suguru's got the fastest split there, closing in. All right. So Acer Iverson, teammates with Graham Blanks. Graham Blanks and Acer Iverson I saw at the In-N-Out Burger down in Irvine after the sound running track meet. And Graham Blanks was racing the 5K. He got second there in Heat 2 in 13.35. Threw his hand up with two laps to go. And I thought he was calling his shot. I thought he was pointing <laughs> to the fences Babe Ruth style. But uh, he ended up getting, getting second there. That's and uh, it turns out that he was just acknowledging the in-stadium announcer. That's that, incredible. That he got the, uh, he got it. the correct lap split yeah. there. So moving up into third and coming right up on Seguru is Henry Sterling. And Henry has a pretty unique story, too. Uh, we were doing some, some uh, research on his end, and he went to Dartmouth. And uh, in 2014, he helped the men's cross-country team make the national meet for the first time in 10 years. Um, pretty incredible. You know, Dartmouth is a tough place to train. Is it's a, yeah, it's a well, it's a nice hilly, foresty area. But in the winter time, ooh, that is. I, well, I, that's true. You know, it, it, that's I, why you take up cross country skiing, <laughs> like Big Ben. True. Big Ben. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, we got a couple of wicked smart boys in this race too. Acer Iverson. And, yeah. And Sterling, some some Ivy Leaguers. You got some Stanford folks in here too. Uh, Kevin Havel, uh, Stanford grant, a grad, ran at the 2012 and 2020 marathon trials. Is in the mix. Um. All right, and we have Seguru closing it down on Acer Iverson. Iverson pushing out there. Made a made a bold move to the front. Yeah, we got about five laps to go here, so. Seguru's reeling them in. They're running about 70s still, so 440 pace. Still another 70, and Seguru with the fastest split closing in. Henry Sterling trying to hold on to Seguru, but not able to clutch onto those coattails. And we'll see how Iverson responds here when Seguru, the winner yeah. of the hot 10K, the meet record setting 10K tonight, yeah. comes up on his shoulder. And you just look at mechanics here. You can see just how Seguru is really just letting his stride go and just like kind of reeling him in and just looking like he has a really solid flow here. And uh, here, here it comes now. Let's see what happens here. Can but Acer? Um, but um, <laughs> the sharks are coming. But um, oh yeah, is it the, is it Pete's sharks now? Uh, Not the dragons. Pete, you have to say Pete and Sonya's sharks now. Has a nice ring to it though. I, the I sharks. It, yeah. All right, here we go. Coming up on a mile. What do you think Acer's thinking about right now? Is he just like... I don't think Acer knows that, that Seguru Osako is, is breathing down his neck right now. But 
<laughs> Seguro's going. He's going for the Dave and double times two with this a day with a Dave Waddle hat on. So he's just gonna run consistent all the way through. Yeah, this is the Dave and double double. <laughs> Another in and out reference tonight. <laughs> Acer nope. Iverson up front doing the work for Seguro Osako, who did the work in the latter stages of the first 10k and won it 27:56. We'll see what he can run here. He's 47 and a half laps into this race. All right, 40, 47 and a half laps into his, uh, his weekend. So. And you see Pete Julian giving splits there, too, just looking real casual. They've got a K to go, uh, and this is going to be a lot of fun, a good mental challenge for both of these athletes. Do you think Iverson slows it down on, on Segura oh, a little bit just to save the kick? Because he knows he's there. He's now. looking Look around. He's like, okay, <laughs> here we go. This is what I came to Portland from. This is, this is the best race of the night, maybe. We get this is uh this is incredible. The kid from Harvard. He's just a kid from Harvard. He's out front. He's got he's got a Japanese some national record holder on him. A two oh five marathoner. Suguru's run thirteen oh eight in the five K. One of the fastest men in the world. Breathing down that the Havid freshman's neck right now. You know, the kids in Cambridge are probably having a heyday. They're probably really excited. They're staying up past their bedtime, really excited to see this one go down. That's uh, true, yeah. The supper clubs are going wild right now. <laughs> Here we go, 600, coming up on 600. Oh, you can see it starting to pick up here. Both arms, both legs, really motoring here. 600 meters to go. So Wait, that's not right. Oh, they'll, they'll be on two laps with We with got two one. laps to two go laps coming up here. Yep. So this is 800 would, meters to go. Yep. That was a K. Yeah, my mistake. It's okay. It's okay. Twitter is very forgiving. <laughs> you had the pros in here earlier. Oh, look at this. Iverson moving out, telling Seguro that he needs to do some work here. That's, interesting. that's a bold move. Oh, but he swings back in. He knows that that's not going to happen. Seguru says, no, I've already done my work today <laughs> in the first heat. But, yeah, let's see. What are the supper this clubs is, thinking right now? You know, th they're probably yelling at their screens, this, cheering them on. This is where the electric forest comes alive. It looks like Seguru might be wanting to You're make right. a pass this, here. This is going to be one of the better races of the night. 600 meters to go. Pete's giving uh, Seguro some instructions here on the back stretch. Pete Julian telling him to stay calm. Strike when the time is right. Protect the dragon's lair. <laughs> Iverson looking really good here. Man, he's run a tough race. Oh, man, what is going through that young man's head right now? A Harvard freshman out in front. Seguru Osako still on his heels, approaching his 50th lap, and we yeah. got a lap to go. All right, so let's see what they're going to run their final lap in. Coming at 27.58, 59, slow. Bell lap here. Iverson still at the front. Does, does Osako have another 61 in him? Does Iverson have a 61 in him? That was a 68-second lap, so they ratcheted it down. They're two seconds faster than they have been running. 300 to go. And Iverson making him work for it Is now. this a sit-and-kick race? My goodness, this is going to be so fun here. 250. Seguro's looking around. He's trying to gather himself to make a pass. Is he going to try to pass before the curve? He's got a lot of laps in his legs. Can he do another half? I don't know. Iverson's Acer. pushing it now. Iverson's Whoa! gapping it. This is fun. Is he going to let it go? Is Seguro going to let him go? Here we come. Oh, man, a guy like that. Around the bend. World-class athlete stretch. of that caliber, you can't let it go. Oh, he's tightening it up again. Iverson going, but Iverson not gritting his teeth yet. He's not even straining. Seguru Look at him. Is just Seguru is tightening the screws. He's pulling up on his shoulder, but Iverson's still out in the front. Iverson driving to the line. Iverson takes it. 29.02. Wow. What a race. He held him off. 29.02. Here comes Henry Sterling into the line. So it was a 64 for the last lap. That was pretty great for the kid from Harvard. Wow. 27.56 and then 29.02 immediately after. Closing in 61 and 64. 
50 laps. That was a, a 212 <laughs> final 800 meters here. Here comes Pat Ritchie coming in for the BTC Elite, too. Pat Ritchie, a Nike employee who's worked on a lot of the apparel that these athletes are wearing. That's a 2940, roughly, for, for a, Pat Ritchie. That's a good race for the former Zag. Local hero. Lots of other athletes running really great times.